before you do any work in a shower, before you take the cover off the shower, you must make sure that the shower is safe. So that means making sure you've got the thing switched off at the pull cord switch, or if you have one of these type of switches, an isolation switch, make sure it's switched off at the isolation switch. That in itself is not good enough. You must check that if you have a circuit breaker, that you've switched the, shower, switched the power off at the circuit breaker, or if you've got the old style fuse, you've removed the fuse before you start. Once you're sure that there's no power getting to the shower, you can then, it's then safe to remove the cover. Okay, so now we think we've got the power switched off, both at the isolation switch and at the fuse box. The next thing we've got, we can now do is so we can safely remove the cover from the shower. But before you start any work in the shower, you must double check that the power's off. And so what to do is I know that this is just a, this is just a dummy, but we need to put the, the, our, our meter in and check that there's no power arriving at the shower. This does seem a bit like belt and braces, but in truth, I remember going to a shower one time and finding that although I had the switch switched off and the fuse pulled, that when I actually tried to test the shower, there was still power coming on to the shower. It was wired into the house next door. I'm sure it was a mistake. Okay, so one of the things we're going to look at today is the, the elements in the heating tank. What happens is that the elements can often just burn out because of old age and for various reasons. And so the, it's quite a common fault to have to replace the heating tank in these. But what we need to do is to test the element first to make sure that the element is actually faulty. Now the heat, heating tanks come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They can be made of plastic um, with the elements inside. They, they are all similar in that they have a place for the water to go in and a place where the water comes out. You can see that there are different sizes, different shapes, water in, water out. Um, there's also um, metal tanks, very similar, the elements are in here. Um, another type of tank, same again, um, this is a 10 kilowatt tank that's got three elements inside it, I'll explain that later. And this is really what the inside of the tank looks like. That um, the inside is much like an old fashioned kettle element and it's just packed with element inside. These, this is what heats up. And what we need to do now is to test the elements from the outside so that we can check without taking the tank to bits whether the elements are faulty or not. Okay, so this is the meter that we sell, it's a multimeter that we sell that um, it's good for testing the shower. You can do all the tests you need to do in a shower with this. It's also handy for testing batteries to see how much power is in them and check fuses. However, we're going to check the resistance of the elements in this tank. So we need to put the black probe here into where the blue connection is and then the red probe onto what's normally a brown or black wire. And we go in here and you see we've got a resistance of about 16.3 ohms which means that that element's good. There's also another one in at the back here and that's 12.5 ohms. That also means that element's good. Most times if you have resistance then the element is good and inside a shower you'll find that the resistance goes to be somewhere between 11 and 18 ohms. It depends on the power of the shower. Okay, so just to have a quick look at another type of tank, same, same idea. This is a 10 kilowatt tank and it's got three elements in it and really the test is very much the same. That uh, This is a more professional meter, it's easier to use. But um, you can see here we've got a resistance of 14 ohms and then this one's got a resistance of 11 ohms. And just, it just goes on. If you find that um, you get one with a zero or a one on the dial here, then that will mean that the, there is no resistance and it means that the, one of the elements inside the tank has blown and that the tank will need replaced. 